they all start with some some level of, of coding skills. Oh. Yeah, Same with our have another four zero meters. <laughs> yeah, that's really beneficial. I'm a grad student currently Affirmative. and okay. did not take <laughs> a coding class before I started grad school, <laughs> and it was very difficult to learn how to analyze my own data sets that way, but eventually got into a course um, just with R, but it was very, very um, helpful. And now R seems almost easy because I could just understand the ins and outs. And, and now I'm trying to learn different platforms of coding because the languages are very different and do different things. And it's really important to be uh, diverse in coding as well. And they evolve yes. without question. <laughs> <laughs> look at it, look at this rectangular block. Isn't, yeah. isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. It's hard to believe that things like that occur naturally. Yeah, I've been thinking about the entire dive looking at these columnar uh, mm -hmm. formations. They just look so perfect as if they're man made. Yeah. yeah. But that's actually something that's split. I think, I, I wonder even if that's two sides of the, the same piece that's split now. Yeah. It's just cracked open there. Can so you zoom in if you're if you're hanging around? Can you zoom in on that, uh, sure, that I can, exposed uh, face? I can actually get. And if you can closer snap a here. few pics yeah. of that, I think some some geologists would be probably happy to see what that looks like. Watch the cameras. But so watch the cameras. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'm watching. All right. Yeah. I was just I was Jonathan squeezing my arm there. <laughs> I could feel it from here. <laughs> the fish eye, so if it looks close, it is really close. Yeah. But it's touching us too close. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, okay, so we yep. can do a zoom from here and you know, really get the... <laughs> so you are sorting out the tether right now? Nope, nope, we're all good. We've all been, good? Um, okay, so we've been We've been moving the ship. Yeah, let's just move on until uh, we have, uh, again, about 20, 25 minutes. So we'll just move along the wall, see what we see. and. Um, we have uh, actually maybe some interesting wall to the east, uh, which would yeah. be... Uh, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, let's go east, Chris. And east, Raj. See, uh, yeah, what Atlantis lighting up in our sonar there. All right. You... All right. I'll do a somewhat small move. So c coming back to coding, we've also... What we've done now is Reach our whole hold position first and year Let's do a two zero courses. meter due east. Oh. We've we've got all the exercises tied to what we call Python notebooks. Oh. And wow. so the students need to have that familiarity to basically do their do their assignments. That's cool. And That's really cool. I like that idea. Jupyter notebooks are you talking about? With Jupyter notebooks, excuse yeah. me. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Well our navigator, Chris, he just taught me GitHub and it kinda changed my life. So thank you, Chris. Yeah. I need to link your GitHub to Visual Studio and GitHub Copilot. That'll auto magic for you. Oh yeah. yeah. We got we did a little bit of that action. Oh yeah. Well not yeah. I was using uh PyCharm, but Yeah. Similar deal though. Yeah, yeah. I tried, uh, last time I was at Arrow's board one night, I tried Visuino. Mm. <laughs> it didn't work out so well. It's all uh, graphical, so you just, you know, drag the lines out. Sure. And Just going to uh, pop up from here, get an overview if you want to chase me up. Yep, that would be helpful.
And uh, somebody's asking about the map that's being displayed on Quad. Okay, that's that's good on the up. Thank you. Manel, do you know what? Oh, um, the big the, the, it the says, map on Quad. Yeah, with the blue lines. I think that's our position, uh, the position of the ship, yeah, isn't on it? Yeah, on the quad map, it's yeah. showing a larger positional map. Yeah. We're, we're each now Which map is it? That three zero meters, on zero on nine zero. Quad. Yeah. I can pull up the quad. What was the question? Uh, they're asking, uh, like, what the blue lines are. Let's go well, south, the, the Chris. Blue lines no, are no, oh, now we want to go south. The yeah, yeah. sorry. Bridge nav, make that yeah. due south. This is the feature here that we were looking at, so I can slide it along this to the south Roger. for a while. <laughs> is that oh, in yeah. the lower right yeah. quadrant? Yeah, the blue lines are our, and the little yellow triangle is us. It's the Nautilus. Yeah, I don't, I don't have a. Yeah, I just pulled it up on. On Google. Okay. Cool, cool, it was cool. kind of the last step we were on was breaking up. I was hoping this one was uh, more significant. But okay, never know until you get there. Taking, it's also broken up. We're gonna stop up. taking data again. Like we have, we have enough for this tonight. You got enough film, huh? Yep. So tomorrow, are we diving on the same site, or are we diving on a different site with uh, basalt? I think the idea is to dive on the same site, but to do it in the mm. immersive with camera set for the immersive mode. Yeah, so tomorrow we will be reorienting these cameras. Uh, they, they, have, they do two things well. One is this uh, photogrammetry element, where we're combining the data from three cameras. And then the other one tomorrow is going to be for filming specifically for kind of big dome projection and for VR. Uh, VR worlds using okay. headsets. And how do you how do you how are the cameras different when you do that? So tomorrow you're going to see all three cameras recording in parallel on the deck. Um, so we'll have the stereo cameras just right next to each other to get um, that 3D view, um, and the main cinema cameras right in the center of those, providing a very high resolution image. Where if you were standing in a dome theater or a room, typically. Your whole family around you would be looking at a screen, a focal object, and we want that focal screen to be as high resolution and beautiful as possible. And the fish eyes wrap that world around you in as you're standing in that dome. So. Oh, and today the cameras are configured how? The, today the cameras are configured much wider than that. So one stereo camera is all the way to the left hand oh. side of the porch, and the other one's all the way to the right. So you really don't get a good visual straight ahead as but you would you get, want. You get yeah. the widest coverage. But you get the widest coverage. You're, you're really using every available inch of the light pool, which you can see on Sat Feed 3 right now, just how wide that is mm -hmm. uh, in the two stereo cameras. Yeah. Um, so aside from coding, what other skills would be useful for someone interested in working with all y'all, or even what sorts of personality type qualities? Ah, <laughs> oh. personality. That's a, that's a good one. Yeah. yeah. So, so I think you know, coding is uh, an important skill, but with the coding comes uh, math and, and physics. I think uh, the ones I always emphasize. I think Jonathan, you emphasize that too. That 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 you know, the whole world is explained by physics, and yeah. every phenomena we see here is going to come back somehow to physics and, and often to build that those explanations and, and to understand the coding. You need to have some level of understanding of math. Um, sure. so, so those two skills. From a personality perspective, I think um, I, I've got two answers. I said, you know, right now when we still spend so much time on a ship, I think it's 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 important to be fairly easygoing and, yeah, and, and, and adaptable and, and, and understanding mm -hmm. um, because it's a it's a a large group of people in a very small space. And yeah, so and be the kind of person that can work with other people towards a common goal. Exactly. It's that not about you, it's meters. about the team and yep. with the yeah. objectives of the team. That, yeah. that, that's oh, exactly true. right. And I think we, last leg we, we had part of what was called the, the uh, cooperative, in, uh, cooperative Institute, Ocean Exploration Cooperative Institute. And we had three teams from, well, four, really, four teams from different competing institutions. We're always competing for funding and everything. 
um, and, and very, you know, intense technologies, and yet it was just such a wonderful example of collaboration. Mm -hmm. One piece of equipment didn't work. Group, mm -hmm. Another group would offer a replacement yeah, part. Problem they, solving skills. Yeah, the, the yeah. engineers uh, would, would work yeah. together. Yeah, so it was really, yeah, you know, I think we've mm -hmm. we've really come to that point here, at least on this ship, of, 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 of having that filter of, of a really good group of people. Yep. How about how about from video? Like I know I definitely came from a, a, actually a wildlife biology background, and I was a cinematographer. So um, again, it came from a different route from the kind of hardcore physics and uh, hardcore STEM fields. But are there other examples here from like what kind of what kind of background do you have, and how did you get here? What do you value? Are you talking to me? Yeah, Pete. yeah, Pete. <laughs> Uh, I, I come back, uh, I, my uh, original broadcasting experience is from sports, so, uh, which is a fun and exciting experience because it's fast paced, um, but uh, more recently I worked at Microsoft Corporation and, and got a chance to uh, see things from the inside on a large corporate environment, and the growth of Azure and the cloud and uh, still working in broadcast there, so got the best of both worlds. and. Um, I'm expanding my horizons, uh, still staying in television Ooh. and broadcast, but uh, working on the ship. Come up. So it's been awesome. Thank you for asking. The, uh, the wall's getting a little close there. I'm going to come back to the left, and I'll have you... Uh, yeah, just come up for now. So tell her, and what was your background? You, you're, yeah. you're more on the biological side. I am, yeah. So I got an undergraduate degree in just general biology because I went to school in Indiana, so they didn't offer any marine science. But um, initially I had started as a pre-vet major. I wanted to help animals. Uh, but then I realized I was more curious about exploring, and I changed my major actually to telecommunications because <laughs> I wanted to oh. make documentaries. Interesting. Um, but then after watching a Mission Blue documentary with Sylvia Earle, I realized I really wanted to get my hands in on being a part of the science and the research okay. and trying there. to help explain uh, the... what's going on with the ocean and how to protect and conserve it. So uh, after nope. undergraduate degree, I went to Duke Marine Lab to do a, a scholarship there, uh, a whole semester where I got to do uh, my own independent research project and took some uh, classes. So there's no so object in the 20-meter really awesome. range ring there. Um, so that's how I started, but I wasn't always sure where I wanted to go. Uh, in particular, and it wasn't a always clear. I had wall. to work really hard at it. <laughs> so, it, it, yeah, yeah, both. Always, so what's you below you and what's next to you? Documentary. Um, when it's broken up, you it's don't have to typically. Go to to make art, right? Yeah, uh, that's what I'm hoping. Yeah, I've always, you know, tried to keep my art alive. That means uh, it's, still paint it's, and sculpt uh, and do other things like that too. So I'm a creative at nature. When it's uh, red, uh, but it's I really solid, tried harder to wall. understand the science because I knew that was something that yeah. might get me a better job. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so I grew up with a single mother, so she always emphasized the importance of ed education. So yep, I went yep. with the science. Yep. Um, Jonathan, are the stereo cameras different colors on purpose, or are they just different because of placement? And it'll be color corrected later. Oh, good question. They are uh, different because of placement. Um, yeah, you can come down. A so, um, one, the light intensity on one side of the vehicle, just because of how these cameras are placed, is a little bit stronger than the other side. So I have to do a little bit of balancing of the light. Um, and because of how seawater absorbs certain spectra, red in particular, first you'll see this pretty sharp contrast between uh, items going green, then blue, and if you get really close, then you'll actually start to see the real color um, because uh, uh, those wavelengths of light aren't, aren't being absorbed so much. So super perceptive. Um, they are set to the same 4,000 Kelvin white balance, but um, that's that's the variation of the amount of light hitting those different objects and how much is getting absorbed because of the uh, orientation of the lights on the ROV. Cool. Well, that's good. We can hold the 20 for a while. 
it's really kind of broken up here and So if you're just joining us, we are looking at some basalt rock and looking for uh, columnar basalt formations and we're basically mapping it so we can make a 3D rendering, uh, eventually um, kind of like a, you know, footage for a dome theater, um, an immersive experience, you know, virtual reality. And Jonathan is doing some really cool stuff How with far are we from, uh, making these 3 images point. for us. We are uh, still 500 meters. Oh yeah, I'll never We've been kind of orbiting. We can, I mean, we can start heading that way. We have to start climbing contours. Yeah, is that which way is uphill on your map? Uh, one four zero. Yeah, let's do that. All right. Well, we talked we talked about careers at sea and and personalities Bridge and nav, skills. Three zero and meters, one this four project, zero. Even just with what's quote unquote simple three cameras <laughs> on an ROV, um, it it requires a whole team of people ago. to Sorry. actually pull off. You know, and it's fine. I don't. Uh, this I don't project any particular wouldn't reason have to get to the waypoint exactly. Like, uh, Rachel Simon, she's sitting behind me in the studio right uh, now. I should have just started going up hill. Surprise! I have it. And software engineer that's helped behind the scenes. You tried, make and I uh, wanted to go south for some reason. In fact, uh, <laughs> the reason I was able to generate that model during this dive within 12 uh, minutes you was because bring your head she's coded to on the back uh, end uh, automated fetcher routine that, as I'm taking the pictures, they get put onto a server. That server transmits them yes, to my desktop, and I can process them immediately. Uh -uh. Um, that's a skill set I don't have, and <laughs> if uh, she wasn't here, and, and we didn't have this team around us. Uh, we wouldn't have been able to do that. That that one example. It's the same thing for for Dan, who's currently our pilot right now. It seems simple. These are just cameras in a 6,000 meter bottle, right? A big titanium bottle. But the reality is that working with any system on an ROV is, presents its own challenges. And in this case, um, heat has been a big issue, as we expected, but, but it's always something that's difficult when you stuff a camera inside of a bottle like this that runs hot. And um, his help as an engineer of figuring out how to physically bolt the cameras onto the system to dealing with heat, and to dealing with the networking, the physical integration. Um, again, if without that, it, it wouldn't have happened. So. It is fun to it have can, designed uh, come up a camera a bit. system come like this and to see results and to think the big picture of the whole process, but it, it really you can uh, maybe rehome it if you want, Chris. A, a maybe it'll of stay now. You can rehome the DVL if you want. Maybe it'll stay now that we're on a. And how long did you say you've been working on this camera? This camera was initially conceived. This entire project was conceived about a year ago by 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 Dr. Ballard when we were out on an expedition and we were discussing um, how to advance the state of, of imaging. Um, and uh, Dr. Ballard holds uh, one of the, the, the longest um, uh, relationship with the Office of Naval Research. And uh, we were uh, really honored to be able to apply uh, funding towards this program to develop the system. And even more important than developing the system, kind of thinking about the processes behind how we wanted to make it happen. Um, and that's, that's a big development road that led us. Uh, we used a, a fantastic engineering group called Sexton Corporation. Um, so they're based, uh, they produce some brilliant underwater housings for this type of uh, underwater work that we do. Um, they're the ones that designed the bottles, helped measure all of the optics, uh, made sure everything would work as we uh, wanted the cameras to work once we laid down our specifications for the type of image we needed to achieve. Um, and that was its own process of testing it during shakedown. About four months ago, we discovered more things we needed to address um, to uh, testing different variations of the system on a bench top system. So continuing some of the development work on land. 
And that all got us ready for yesterday's shakedown dive, where that was really the first time they've all been turned on underwater. Does it go back downhill there, Chris, or is that all the way up? No, it's all, all And then always, 24 hours later, that hmm. vision is starting to kind of come to pass. Yeah. Where so we, we took scans, we developed them can, here on the uh, desktop, and, and imaged. Uh, uh, I'm coming up too fast. That's, that's really cool. Yeah. I'm getting too far away. Yeah. So questions asking, when you say columnar of assault, do you mean meters. the hexagonal pillars? Yes. Uh, like Devil's Post Pile, I think. Like, is that Devil's Tower, right? Affirmative. I think is. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. exactly the same phenomenon, the cooling phenomenon that, that uh, is in. Yeah. Devil's Post Pile is one of them. What's the other one in. Uh, in. The Devil's Northern Post Ireland Pile is, is in uh, California. And, oh, okay. And then I think. And so that's different than Devil's Tower because isn't that Devil's like Tower South is in Wyoming. Oh, yeah. Wyoming, okay. Yeah. So those two are different. There's uh, the Giants Causeway in nor Northern Ireland, this uh, Fingal's Cave in uh, Scotland. Those are, these are probably the most famous ones, those, those four, I suspect. Uh, where I grew up in New York City, there was the, across the Hudson River, the Palisades. Uh, and that cliff is uh, another columnar basalt. That's very nice, Dan. <laughs> what, what is that? <laughs> it looks like a sponge on top of a coral. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, usually the stalks are smooth when it's a stalk sponge. So it looks like this sponge just settled on top of a coral lip here. Who needs zoom? Who needs zoom? <laughs> All right, I'll take one picture of it. Come on. <laughs> I highlighted it. All right. And my description was sponge on top of coral. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. I like the shadow of uh, a... It shadow. looks like a flower. It yeah. does, like a tulip. No, yeah. there's a shadow of a fish going by. Oh. It just moved, moved off frame, but uh, that was really quite cool. Ruin, ruin uh, Jonathan's picture, but... Neat. Did you get a picture? Yeah, yeah, okay. we, we, oh, wow, well, yeah. well covered, Dan. Right okay, there. Dan, nice. move on. <laughs> Moving on. I'm waiting for the ship, actually. Oh, okay. Oh. Well, if you've got a reason, that's fine. I always have a reason. <laughs> uh. He is the hero of this sci-fi movie. Yeah, there was a the little fish that <laughs> oh, yeah. caused the shadow. That is Halasora Day. Mm. Um, let's see here. Can get more specific with that. Well, a sore day in a dust field. <laughs> We're five minutes to. Okay, yeah, five off minutes bottom. for off bottom. Yeah, we're climbing the hill the whole time. There so we go. I should have turned and burned this way earlier. Yeah, there we go. I knew we were going to find it just as we come to the end. Oh. <laughs> well, curiously, the waypoint is way above the advertised 1680, so. Yeah, well, that's the problem with 1996 navigation. All right. So old, too. Uh. <laughs> I mean, what, 1996? Hey, hey. It's not right. that old. What were you doing old. in 1996? They have like well, 27 well. years. <laughs> I was born that year, so <laughs> it's not that old. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Do you know where you were born? Ancient yeah, yeah. technology. How was the navigation at that time? <laughs> I'd already been married yeah. for a year of that. Back when gas was 90 cents. No, like my students refer to it as the 1900s. And I feel oh my gosh, that's yeah. so Oh, no. And I'm like late 1900s. Like <laughs> well, I'm, I'm sold that every time somebody says the turn of the century, I keep thinking 1800 to 1900. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, really? That's, that's for, for most of my life, the turn of the century was that turn of the century. It was. Oh, no. Yeah. Here's Silver Fox, man. I'm sure you still get carded. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that, that fish we saw was at Aldrovandia um, oh. in the in Halasora Day. Oh. They're really cool looking. Uh, the way you can tell the difference between the actual halosaur and Aldervandia is that the halosaur have scales on their face, 
and this species is more a smooth oh, I, th I thought I thought the halosaur would have bad breath. But... <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> Do a quick zoom there. Go ahead. Go ahead. This one's you for you, Mia, if you're watching. Yeah. <laughs> His final thrill. A starfish. Do we know her type? That's Goni asterid, oh. I believe. That's, I, the little Jonathan on my shoulder is saying, don't tag that. Don't <laughs> highlight that. <laughs> okay, you can go wide. <laughs> Every year we have wonderful new science communication fellows and other people in the van that rightfully <laughs> remind us how cool certain things are. <laughs> In That's the right. Sea. No, no. seriously. Yeah. Oh, like. What? You get used to seeing. Yeah, what you're like, yeah. 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 Jonathan, what comes yeah. after it's sea cucumber? <laughs> it's definitely not what comes common. after sea cucumber. Sea star. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo. Well, I, no. think, I, I think this That's is great. cool. Look at look at this. Wow, that look one's climbing this. on a rock. Let's yeah. give it a five. <laughs> no, a five gets people out of bed. That's what you said. No, I know we still have uh, very enthusiastic. Like we're waking up, Bob Ballard. Jonathan is. Yeah. Whoa! Is that yeah. a big? But look at that. A that, big column. Yeah. Look at that. Wow. Well, I guess I might as well just start. <laughs> now that one wants to jump off the. Cliff. Yeah, that one's gonna fall. Huh? It might fall on her if I get wow. too close to it. Wow! Yeah, no, let's get close and then uh, <laughs> see if you can peek out under it too. I'll bet I could roll it. Reason. I'll bet I could roll it right onto the porch and we could bring it up on deck. Oh, that's a pretty cool column. Wow. Oh, oh I'm getting, uh, can you come down five, please? Down five, down five. Getting my tail yanked there. Yeah, I was uh, pulling, pulling you around, sir. So that's I am. Uh, All right, I think that's a fitting image to end on. Absolutely. Look how big it is in comparison to Hercules. Dan, what's your favorite car analogy for how large Hercules is? My favorite what analogy? Car. What What do you use to say Hercules is as big as a? Oh, I don't know. Um, Maddie earlier was saying yeah. like a mail truck. A mail truck? No. Uh, yeah, that's no. a good one. Or a U-Haul. I was thinking no. U-Haul is what I've been no. saying, but it's not quite well, as big. Like the smallest U-Haul. Smallest. Mail truck is pretty yeah. on point. Yeah. yeah. Or that's, a that was Maddie. <laughs> yeah. Volkswagen bus is probably a... Yeah, Volkswagen bus. Yeah. It's as fancy as a G-Wagon, though. It's about as old as a Volkswagen <laughs> bus, too. <laughs> okay, give it a push and... Uh, We'll be, then we'll scoot out a lot of it. Roger. Okay. I guess it's actually fancier than a G wagon. <laughs> I'm um, happy with that imagery. There's only so much we can. Thankfully, that rock didn't move too fast. <laughs> well, boy, when it starts to fall, <laughs> that would be straight down. All right, I stopped. All right, gentlemen the image. and ladies. Coming up. We are. All right, excellent dive, everybody. Yeah, it was great. It was a lovely first watch with the with my new watch team. Absolutely yes, incredible. this was a blast. You know, what's funny is uh, we're not going to be off bottom for a while because we're next. Yes, that's to right. The bottom's going to follow you right up for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was a good well, giant. That's a good. Right that's here. a good point. So we should <laughs> should keep our eyes open there because the uh, column had to come from somewhere, you know. Yeah, if you look uh, to your right a little bit and then keep coming up. Uh, yeah, just keep coming up there.
Huh. Hercules is full vertical up. So you think we're look we're good for uh what's our time to surface, Dan? Eighty eight minutes. Eighty eight minutes, Roger. Uh what right. yeah let's see if I uh get up to twenty meters a minute here, maybe uh more like seventy minutes. Okay. Hour and ten. I could probably do it in an hour. Okay. Bridge, bridge, nav. Hercules is off bottom. We're looking to be on surface in a little over an hour. Okay. I'm gonna uh I'm full up there. I'm making about 20 meters a minute, which you can see from the utility page, and you can switch to the utility page as well if you want. Your your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to keep that delta uh, in single digits in a positive fashion. And what we're basically doing uh, when we come up uh, before we do that, actually, you've got to spin uh, clockwise 180. That'll put us uh, tail to tail, just how we launch a recovery, which you've seen now on deck, right? And uh, on these two aft cameras here, we will see uh, we'll see each other in our rear view mirrors, or as we fondly call them, butt cam. And then, yeah, you're good there, so you can turn off your auto heading now. And uh, what I'm going to do is uh, stretch it out, as we call it, so. I'm going to keep it tight, and then uh, that should keep us tail to tail. Yeah, so now you're above me because it's a negative number, so you got to slow down a little. But I should be able to keep, I should be able to maintain that 20 meters a minute. So the limiting factor here is Hercules' uh, rate of ascent, and 20 meters is a minute. It's kind of our published uh number and that's usually what the verticals pinned at 100 percent and uh, we keep a little forward way on maybe uh, somewhere in the teens like so that you do so um, I'm well above you now so you need to come faster 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 yeah so see I'm 20 meters above you now so, um, funk you out? No, we ain't worried about that. Yeah. Uh, there's a known issue with the with the uh, winch, and it's buried layers down below there. So you're going to have that funky wrap on uh, uh, close to the drum flange there. Sorry. Give me a second here. I'm gonna. I have a new button that Dave has kindly put on here. Uh, where is it? Said he put it on here. Ta -da -ta -da -ta -da -ta -da. It was our dive track there from the bottom. It went up. I don't see it. Where is it, Dave? What's that? What are you looking for? He said he gave me a uh, winch camera here. What's your... Um, Where do you want it? Yeah, you need to come way faster. What you're looking like at there is, a minute. Uh, the rendering that Jonathan just did of the basically the scans that we took of these formations of basalt. What? So what, what about these like black spots? 
black spots mean oh it's not a good. fish uh nope. you can put uh i usually <laughs> put no uh it's weird that it's like right floating this way right so i can actually go like that it's just an outlier oh you have it so let me do an exercise here with uh with right Gone. i'm gonna go off comes here cool So this is what we're doing with this footage. We want to make 3D models, turn it into immersive experiences. That'll be really cool. Yeah. That's maybe half an hour's worth of a dive. Oh. Future is now. <laughs> Ooh, look at this lost cohesion here. Color spray. Yeah. Great. Okay. I'm Very gonna go cool. down to the data lab and start doing this. Right. Starting getting all the processing up here. Right. Thanks everyone for listening and following along. Um, when do you plan on going down next? So let me check the messages because we got sent the schedule. Um, so the plan is to, uh, for tomorrow at 0 0800 Hawaiian time, uh, we should be on station and the ROVs will be off the deck at 0 0900. So that's 9 a.m. Hawaiian time is when we will be diving again. On it looks like more columnar formations because they're going to be using different technology, right? Well, they're reconfiguring the cameras to make them closer together. Yeah, yeah they're going to reconfigure the cameras to, to optimize uh, display for an immersive, big dome, yeah. immersive type display. So t uh, tell me if I'm understanding this correctly. The, the like the 3D renderings like this one on the quad, right? The the way that the camera was configured for this dive, right? That's for these kinds of things. And then um, what yeah, we're the, doing the, tomorrow is more the dome footage. Like Yeah, so, so as far as I understand, this is Jonathan's uh, expertise. Um, t today's cameras were configured to really give the widest coverage but to ensure that we get this overlap that mm -hmm. allows them to build that 3D model. Yeah. So this gives the, the you know the real broad coverage and allows us to go back and and explore the dive. And the cameras are, are separated as far as possible to do that and looking. Yeah. Um, tomorrow it looks like the cameras are going to be really focused right down the middle, I think, and so for the clearest image. Yeah. Right. So you get a really really crisp clear picture wherever the vehicle is looking at and I think then they use the vehicle to basically get mm -hmm. the big coverage that so yeah wherever you stand in this dome things are really sharp and crisp that's my understanding of it we'll, yeah. we'll see we'll see what the reality is that would be cool
You can see the the way the horizon's moving on uh, behind the A-frame. Yeah, it made me feel a little dizzy just looking yeah. at it. Yeah, 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 yeah. maybe I shouldn't yeah. look at that. I don't think you want to look at that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, I've got my, my scopolamine patches, which mm. are really, uh, they just they, make me thirsty. Yeah, well, uh, yeah. lots of people have different reactions to them, but they, they, yeah. seem, they seem to work. I really like them because yeah. then you don't get drowsy mm. like you do with Dramamine. Yeah, I'm afraid to try the patches, but I take bonine chewable tablets. Oh, okay, cool. Bone, uh, bonine. Okay. Yeah, but does bo does it make you sleepy? No, no. Okay. Yeah, I think I might have bought like the non-drowsy kind. Uh, yeah, but it might all be non-drowsy. I can't okay. really remember. Yeah, I know Dramamine definitely makes you drowsy, and I think yeah, they're, they're and dehydrated too. Yeah, there might be some non-drowsy Dramamine. I'm not sure. I'll have to give the patches a try one it of these years. Yeah. The the scopolamine is that prescription? Yeah, thing? in yeah in the U.S. Yes. In the U.S. Yeah, no, because yeah. I lived I lived in Canada for many years and it wasn't prescription. Yeah. And so I would I would get it and bring it to people <laughs> when when I yeah on the exa that's exactly how I tried it out mm. because I was with on, on a ship with people that were Canadian mm. and they brought a bunch of them and gave me some and I was like okay well let me try it mm. and it's it works really well for mm. me, I mean I don't I would just take it as preventative I don't really get seasick but I'd rather mm. have it and. Not get because well, yeah. Yeah, I, well, I've also some, seen people who've actually had kind of quite adverse reactions to it. And, yeah, with their and, blurry and, vision. Yeah, and hallucinations was another. Oh but, wow! Yeah, somebody but, told me that they have really weird dreams, dreams yeah. when they use the. the but I think the, the dry the dry mouth I think is yeah. the most common. Yeah, I, I just keep drinking water and I'm fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. I think scopolamine was originally developed uh, for morning sickness. Oh, really? I think. I think. Well, so I went to the I went to the doctor, mm -hmm. and the doctor was like, "So you don't feel sick right now?" And I was like, "No, I need them for later." <laughs> but you're fine right now. I'm like, "Yes." <laughs> I'm not seasick. I'm right like, now. <laughs> "Yeah." And so I was like, "Okay." So then I started telling her about the Nautilus and everything, and then um, when it was when uh, they gave me my prescription, the nurse came back in and was like, "The doctor wants you to write down the website." But <laughs> I was like, yes, That's good. of That's course, yeah. nautiluslive.org. Yeah, I think I've uh, gotten more subscribers from just plane rides, you know. <laughs> you yeah. Just start talking to the person next to you, and then if you, if, if you can get a web on uh, the plane, you... Yeah. yeah. I know when I was on my way here for this expedition, uh, my Uber driver actually was talking about how her son kept telling her how he wanted to be a scientist, mm -hmm. and Aww. I thought he was in high school. He was seven years old. Oh, and get so, him young. Yeah, <laughs> so I shared the website with her in the live stream, and so I hope her son is watching and enjoying her videos yeah. now, and maybe will, you know, actually become a scientist like yep. he's dreaming. So it's pretty cool to be able to share this with literally everyone while we're out here, but also when you go home. Yeah. There's so many stories to share. Yeah, like, and tomorrow I have an interaction with our public library, which I'm really oh, excited lovely. about. Yeah. Yep. That's so, exciting. Super so cool. I, I have a five-year-old granddaughter, and I think this will be the, hopefully the first time that she's old enough to actually appreciate what we're doing out here. Yeah. So we'll, hopefully she'll get, we'll get her to tune in at one point. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, I can't imagine where I'd be now if I was watching this kinds of footage yeah, at, at five yeah. years old. And the mentorship here is just so amazing. Yeah, you it know, is. Ev the the willingness of everybody to to help you out and teach you things, and it's it's really I an agree. awesome environment. Yeah, it's it's amazing to be able to work with so many interdisciplinary people that are just willing to offer up that all knowledge. towards a common goal. Yeah. 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 There's something floating by. I think it's a Tina for, but I can't tell. It looks like the, the comb rose. Oh, there we go.
So we are currently ascending. Um, you can see our depth there. Um, it's the yellow number that says 1162. It's going down because we're coming on up. And we will recover the vehicles. You have this watch for about 13, four, yeah, 13 minutes. And then we will trade out with the four to eight watch. And then we're gonna be diving again tomorrow um, on some more columnar basalt formations, which is very fun. We'll be in the, we'll be in the same, same spot. Um, may, I will probably start with the, some of now the Now we know exactly where everything's at. the same <laughs> one, so we yeah. get, we'll get right to, right to yeah. it. And, then, and maybe we'll take the time, we'll start maybe with this last one, mm -hmm. which was big and massive. Yeah. And, 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 and then maybe see if we can move on from there and find others, but mm -hmm. uh, that'll be up to Jonathan because it, you know it's 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 from his perspective that yeah. we're planning things. Jonathan went to the data lab to start crunching all the data. Mm -hmm. But you see already, I mean, it, you yeah. know, within, within a few minutes he had stuff here that was uh, looking very good. Yeah. Well, oh, we are we're getting some swell. Yeah, we're, start, we're starting to move. We're starting bit. to move again, yeah. and it's a lot. Yeah, so the wind's supposed to be picking up, but uh, I think uh, Jason thinks that it, it should remain calm enough that we should uh, be able to dive tomorrow, too. There's a, there's a combination of, uh, I think it's the swell that's actually really picking up. Yeah. But, but the wind's coming from the opposite direction, so they're kind of yeah. hoping to cancel each yeah, other. Yeah, Travis out. was explaining it to me when we were outside earlier, and he was showing me on his phone, like, the predictions and everything. Mm -hmm. I That's really cool. Yeah, there's some very good websites that uh, are yeah. very helpful in predicting what the winds and the waves are going to be. Actually, one of the best ones is something called Windy, oh. and that was started. <laughs> yeah, by is that that's the one with the globe and all the little dots? Is it there? Yeah. There's one where you can like you can pull it up and it shows you all the air currents all over the world. It's really cool, yeah, especially well, like when we're getting a cold front, you can see it coming in. Yeah, and, yeah. Or if you zoom out mm -hmm. far enough, uh -huh. yeah, the, the, you know what we do is really zoom in close mm -hmm. to where we are. And, uh, and and the interesting thing is that website, I think, was started by surfers to really understand oh, yeah. the, the surf uh, conditions they were going to get. But uh, cool. it's really taken off, and it's really quite sophisticated now. Yeah. Very cool. So, because we originally were going to take off to go to the Big Island already, but I guess we're well. That was yeah. yeah. If the weather came up, we were going to go south of Big Island because we'd be sheltered from the, mm -hmm. the wind was coming from the northwest. Mm -hmm. And so here now we're we're totally exposed, sitting here north of Molokai. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so if the wind did come up, we were going to come around, go south of the Big Island, then we'd be in the in the, like yeah. the lee of it, behind it. So we always have that as a backup. But um, you know, th this is a very spectacular sight. So yeah. The more time we can spend here, the better. Very cool. And south of uh, the Big Island are something called the Pinnacles, two very large vertical pinnacles, mm. which will be interesting. Yeah. Every, I, all the sites we're going to go here. Yes, they are. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, they, <laughs> the they, they were chosen because yeah. they're interesting. Um, yeah. And those of you at home, you can look at um, basically what the expeditions are about. Just click on expedition. Um, at the top of your screen, and you can look at uh, basically all the information from all the expeditions. The one that is currently going on NA156, it'll tell you all about that, uh, uh, everything that we're going to be looking at on there. And we'll be here for a little while longer, nine minutes or so, until we switch out. So if you guys have any questions, let us know. We are at almost a thousand meters, a little more than a thousand meters depth. 
Oh. Here's a, a question. Um, what do you call the science that focuses on wind patterns and atmospheric motion? Is it just an odd esoteric branch of meteorology? Always been fascinated by the motion of waves, whether air or water. Is there yeah. a study just specifically? Yeah, no, I, I think uh, the study of wind patterns and, and, and air currents would be covered under meteorology. When you start talking about how they impact the waves, that starts mm -hmm. being physical oceanography. So. Yeah. We've got a note saying, thank you for being so interactive. Some expeditions are better than others. <laughs> well, we thank everybody out there for paying attention. And, yeah. And spread the word. Giving us the opportunity to share science with the world. Yeah. Okay, our new uh, SCF is here. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I'm gonna, um, Danielle's gonna take over for me, so I will see you guys tomorrow.
check. SPL check. One, two, check, check. Hello everyone, my name is Daniela Griffey and I am a teacher at Radford High School. I'm taking over as SCF from Alley. Um, we're still in the midst of our shift change, so once more people come on in and get all settled in, we'll do a quick update on who's all here. But I hope everyone enjoyed that exciting dive and seeing those column basalt formations out there.
That was me. Mm -hmm. uh, no, uh, things are a little wacky here. Uh, we'll have, yep. Mm -hmm. Does everyone want to do like a quick round of introductions for those watching at home still with us as we head on up? Yeah, I'd be happy to. All right, you want to start us off? Yeah. Hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Zach. I'm here in the data logger position uh, as we finish up this dive. Um, not a whole lot left to report on this one, but here to just finish it through the end. Um, but yeah. Thank you, Zach. How about up to Nav next? Sorry, I wasn't on SPL. Oh. Hi, oh. this is Renato Kane. Um, I'm the nav navigator on this watch, and we're setting up for recovery after a pretty successful dive at the columnar basalt site. Um, the stick's um, Simon on the, uh, yeah, controlling Hercules on its way back to surface. Hello, I'm Rai. Um, I'm an ROV intern, and this was actually my first day um, trying out piloting, so I learned a lot. <laughs> awesome. What's your what's the biggest lessons or your take homes that you learned from today? They make it look very easy. <laughs> it's not as easy as it looks, huh? No, definitely not. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I'm Dave Robertson. I'm uh, sitting in the video chair for the uh, four to eight watch. And again, um, I said when I first came in, but for those just coming in, my name's Daniela Griffey. I am the Science Communication Fellow for the 4 to 8 Watch, and I am a high school teacher at Radford High School, located in Honolulu, Hawaii. So it's kind of fun um, being able to take my students on deep sea dives in their home waters. So, Daniela, are you coming up with any fun project ideas for your students through this? Well, I've actually been working on one ever since um, we did our training in Rhode Island. I've actually been working um, with a NOAA researcher to get some of the deep sea samples collected from Nautilus it's into my classroom. Uh -huh. And so through the working with Ilani's Ina Informatics, um, I've been able to get genome sequencing equipment so my students will actually be able to take these samples collected from Nautilus and run um, through PCR gel electrophoresis and using a minion we will be helping sequence the DNA and genome and comparing it with also the eDNA and the water column around it so um, wow. I'm pretty excited for that so we just got the samples in pretty much right before I came out here. So I still have a lot of legwork of getting it all ready for the kids, but. So what's cool about Nautilus is that they'll be able to watch the videos of the samples being collected, you know, feel like they're part of the science and then do the science and be working with the NOAA researcher. So Nautilus has helped, um, helped us make that connection. So pretty awesome opportunity. Yeah, sounds like they're getting quite spoiled. <laughs> I've definitely never had anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they they don't realize that though. <laughs> they're just like, oh, you're making us do what? <laughs> so, yeah, I'm. I think I'm. I'm pretty excited about it. I don't know how excited they are. <laughs> but yeah, I've been slowly trying to. Yep, that is stick look. Introduce certain techniques and stuff that they need, like pipetting. Oh, so still got the uh, Z bias. Oh. Very useful. Oh, okay. 
So eventually I would like to create um, something that, I don't know, like a Google, like, you know, I've seen all these games now, especially COVID, of, like almost like escape room, but they just use Google Slides. And maybe if I could figure out how to do it, make a virtual version of this as my students are doing it and then like film it and put it and make it into that other students in other classrooms that okay. don't have access to PCR equipment can still take part of the process as well. Okay, yeah. And something new, I thought that was just for the uh, axials. I didn't realize it did the verts as well. Yeah, D does all three? Awesome. Yeah. 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 Here's a question in the chat that someone put. How does the network on board work? How did you all make a wireless connection faster yeah. than a wired one? Um, so I just know about our telepresence and that we use um, how we s send out our signal via satellite to back to the main um, offices in Rhode Island. But does anyone else know a better answer on that than I do for how we make our connections? Sounds like a Rachel or Jonathan question. <laughs> <laughs> I think Jonathan is busy a, processing his data post-dive, though. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's really excited with all his footage. <laughs> the question is, um, how does the network on board work? How did you all make a wireless connection faster than a wired one? Well, the, the question is interesting. It's uh, a bit contradictory uh, in that we're not making a wireless uh, connection faster than a wired one. Um, but uh, how does the network work? Uh, we have uh, yeah, that'd be great. We have fiber optic cable all through the whole ship. Uh, most of the network infrastructure runs on fiber optic cable between switches and uh, uh, up and down from the uh, uh, data room uh, down in the, in the uh, middle of the ship up to the vans, control vans on the top deck where we are. Uh, there's a combination of uh, fiber and, w and copper wiring here uh, in, the, uh, in the van. Uh, then uh, video comes from cameras all over the ship and from the ROVs uh, by fiber up the uh, cable from the, the ROVs and from other places on the ship. Uh, video comes into a main distribution point here in the van. Then we uh, select which video goes out, uh, what video goes to what monitors, and what people are looking at. Maybe that helps. <laughs> and then do you want to talk about the satellites and how that all works? He's about, sorry. What's that? Yeah.
So we got a question in the chat saying, how come there are no lights in the control van? The screen's got to hurt your eyes when it's so dark, right? Actually, I think our eyes adjust to night vision and we are able to see better with the screens that we don't get any black uh, back glare from sunlight or other artificial light. So we purposely keep it dark in here. And we actually even have a curtain in the back so that when the door opens and closes, light doesn't get in here. I would also add we have quite a bit of red light, which is much smoother on our eyes as well than yep. bright white light. So we still can see quite a bit. Um, and yeah, we can see the, the screens much clearer this way in the dark. It's kind of just like how the red light also in the ocean, the ocean absorbs the red light first because that red light, it still gives our eyes enough to be able to see what we're doing, but it doesn't ruin our night vision and um, make our eyes start to dilate. So, mm -hmm. And also a lot of our screens are, are sort of black background with white or colored on front of it, which is also a lot easier on the eyes and sort of dives into this sort of darker uh, imagery. So if we we're looking at, uh, for example, a lot of typical screens on the web will have sort of white with black text and this can be sort of a harsher contrast that can certainly hurt the eyes more over time and so we're sort of keeping with this sort of dark or low light theme which also really helps with looking at screens for a long time
Sorry, inverted radio touch there. Sorry about that. Hi, Jack. Um, for your question on if there is a seating chart in the control lab, yes, we actually do have kind of areas where the ROV pilots always sit, NAV always sits, data loggers, SCF. So we do have kind of sign spots based on our roles that we are doing. And we are coming up to where ROVs now are at 57 meters. So I think we're going to stay off. Um, we're going to stop answering questions so that operation can take on over and get our ROV safely on board. So thanks for listening, everybody. Van, Van Deck, we are holding for a hot second. Copy, holding. Okay, continuing. Copy, copy. 
Copy. And we have Hercules, just a port of centerline of A-frame. Copy, we have visual as well.